This video is sponsored by me, sort of. My new book is finally done cooking and I can talk about it now, so you betcha took us I'm gonna. Sunken Isles is my first full adventure supplement that takes you from level 1 to level 20 over the course of 20 sessions and 20 in-game weeks, where you race from island to island trying to stop this magical world from destroying itself. If only people could just talk it out. Well, it's too bad because we have an undead dwarf king running around breaking stuff, we have the body form of a volcano trying to fix things but he's jaded and bad at it, and we have a god sending aliens in to kill everybody. There's a link in the description if that fluffs your geese, so click that thing and stay tuned till next month. Oh yeah, video. Welcome to a video about Tritons, a group of elves with water wings that took a long walk off a short pier and vanished into the ocean for a handful of centuries. Their history begins with the only thing that has ever mattered in history, war. Essentially, the ocean was full of smaller living ocean blobs that were really angry for no reason. So this brave warrior race jumped into the briny deep and slapped the shit out of them. I love this explicit statement that says, The Tritons, driven by a sense of duty and responsibility, would not let their foes escape. Which means, in more accurate words, they were such an unrelenting bunch of militant assholes that when the enemy surrendered, they overextended like Doom Guy and went on a full genocide run. After the elementals were good and cucked, to the point where the tritons literally settled down and started spawn camping, like a dozen of them left their outpost and accidentally became a playable race. A race that, since all they do is dunk on elementals, nobody else in the world knows about. As a result, they come off as entitled assholes. Imagine if someone came up to you in a huge trench coat and a top hat and told you that for your entire life they've been killing bounty hunters to protect you. Bounty hunters that weren't hunting you because you don't have a bounty, but regardless you've been rescued, and then he demands $200,000 as payment. The book essentially states, This might piss everyone off, but their beliefs come from a seed of truth. This might be one of my least favorite explanations of any monster's behavior ever. Like if I took a huge shit on a plate and served it to you because it came from the seed of a delicious meal that I ate, that would not make my shit taste any better. Tritons are just assholes because their ancestors fought the ocean and they killed a fish man yesterday. You can't really justify that. But as with everything that's frustrating and unjust, you could easily explain it a little further. They've been completely isolated essentially forever, surrounded only by other militant buttholes who pat each other on the back every day, and their only enemy is something that could realistically become a dimensional apocalypse. So as annoying as they are, it does make sense that they laugh at two warring kingdoms on the surface and then demand you to spit shine their ancient spear before they go back to work. A quick question, with this level of being jaded and them being an elven race, how long do you think they live? It's gotta be a little bit longer than the lesser beings that they protect, right? A thousand years? A few thousand? No, they don't even live as long as dwarves. They clock out around year 200. Now that we're past their sandpaper personalities for the time being, let's check out some redeeming qualities. In contrast to thinking the world owes them everything, their deep-seated insecurity also has mirroring traits. Tritons believe that they owe everything to the world, which is the real reason that they decided to completely isolate themselves to save it. The absolute tryhards. I'm sure that ancient Tritons were a lot cooler than the silver spooned foot soldiers that they spit out today. But the sacrifice that they boast is a real one and any Triton would bravely jump in front of a bullet for you without knowing your first name. That might be because they refused to learn it and didn't care, but that doesn't mean that they didn't care about you. Isn't that sweet? Eh, debatable. Oh, they're also kinda on the short side, which I find very funny. Lord Farquaad was four foot six, and Tritons usually reach around five feet. So my headcanon is now that all of them are four foot eight and have huge chins. They do get a handful of neat abilities. Amphibiosity, some nice ocean-themed spells, the ability to verbally harass fish, and resistance to ocean adventures. Falling back to their unifying theme of complete ignorance, Tritons have literally no knowledge of how any social structures work. Like you could easily trick them into misusing words and spitting on royalty. If, for some godforsaken reason, you want to play a Triton, don't be a living version of this sound. Ugh. Try to play them more like a Little Mermaid, where they're fascinated with all the going-ons of the world, instead of just being an insulting and insufferable toilet poop stain for the entire session. Because that's basically Tritons. 